PMC is not a transparent body because the details of the various meetings of the PMC, details of the way funds are spent, details on the contractors to whom the contracts are given. Uh, there is a lot of opaqueness about all these transactions, and we are expecting that the BMC, through its e-governance mechanism, will so more to publish uh, these things so that people don't have to spend a lot of their time and energy on getting these mundane details. Uh, we published around 15 reports and 13 of our activists were involved and Anand Bhandare, my colleague, was leading the entire campaign. Uh, as uh, my friend Paresh Kashit just mentioned, he had to go to the N-Ward office 21 times. So you can imagine the kind of efforts that people have to put in. Despite going to the BMC uh, uh, ward offices so many times, in many cases people were not given the required information. And we could not publish four to six reports just because in certain wards, purchase orders and work orders and other details were not given to our actors. So that kind of stubbornness, that kind of adamant approach and that kind of lethargy you will find on the, in, in, on the part of the BNC bureaucracy. The bureaucrats basically are lethargic. At some level they are also ignorant and basically they would like to drag the things and they are not interested in providing information on time. Probably because sometimes we have found that whenever an RTI application is filed, the concerned corporator immediately gets the information from the ward office that some information has been sought by a, by a local person. Some of our activists have got phone calls from the local corporators the next day when they have filed an RTI query about why his he asking for these kinds of queries. So that kind of nexus also we find. So the bureaucracy on the one hand plays like proxy to the political elite. And therefore, because they are hand in glove, things are not happening the way they should. Bureaucrats can be made accountable by using their service rules in the most appropriate manner possible. People are stuck in a particular bureaucratic position for years together. They are found to be corrupt, but those who are found to be corrupt are not transferred, not demoted, not suspended. So this kind of protected wall is there around the bureaucracy. I'm sure the bureaucracy is not going to work in the most efficient manner possible. It is very difficult to point out corruption, but you can point out where the possibilities. For example, in certain wards, uh, contracts of more than 2 crore rupees have been given to one single, single contract. Around 60 to 70 different kinds of activities or different kinds of work orders have been given to the single contract. In, in certain wards, around 100 or 90 kind of different activities, they have just been called as uh, work given at different places. And therefore, in that locality, it is very difficult to locate where the new benches have been fixed, where things have been modified. So, this particular amorphous nomenclature, Vivida Tikani, or things done at multiple places, is very shady in nature, and we are expecting that the BMC will the, we are expecting that the BMC will eliminate this particular category in the wider interest of the people. It has to happen from the sustained front. But at the same time, we need to realize that we have, by the constitution, we have adopted local self-government or we have adopted the idea of decentralization. Especially after the 73rd and 74th constitutional amendment, decentralization has become an important part of our political discourse. Now, modifying the 1888 rule that we have been talking about or many other regulations, we have to ensure that the democracy is vibrant, the democracy is people-oriented and the democracy speaks in the language of the